Hi everyone and welcome to ACCAP4 Advanced Financial Management Revision Session 1. On the screen you can find the um, revision sequence and for the first session which is from now to um, 4.45 UK time we are going to look at investment appraisals so i have picked two big questions on investment appraisals as you can see so i have picked buranj co which is june 2014 question number two and then you land we which is june 2015 question number one the buranj co is in relation to adjusted present value and there is that strong belief that there should be a very good question on adjusted present value this time because the last time that was tested was the June 2014. So watch out for that. Then I've also picked international investment appraisals which was tested in June 2015. Then at your own time, you can also look at these three questions in here for Buki, um, the Seal Island Nuclear, power company the questions are in the revision kit they are solved for you so any questions that you might have whilst you are trying to practice it yourself you can also send them to me and i've also recorded it in the 10 questions so if you have got access to the revision recorded version too you can find these questions in there they i will recommend them to you because they are very helpful and then um, the tramod code so now within this um, 2 and 45 minutes we're going to solve these two questions in investment appraisals so i am just going straight to um june 2014 question number two which is buranj co okay so this is the question buranj co it was a 25 marker question okay let me put you straight into the exam room if you go to the exam room and you will have to solve any question my recommendation is that you don't read the scenario first because the scenario is based on the requirement that the examiner want to test you on so the idea is it will be better for you to go to the requirement read the requirement analyze the requirement know what you are expected of doing so that when you come and you are reading the scenario you will be in position to indicate the necessary information you need to answer the requirement in front of you and in addition to whilst you are indicating the necessary information i don't recommend students to highlight using the highlight pens because when you highlight let's say this bit what is it telling you it doesn't tell you that there is cost of capital there there is maybe number of years there all what it tells you is that oh, there's some information in there that you might need and when you start solving the question you would have to go back to go and read the whole scenario again and time will not allow you in p4 to do that so i normally recommend that you use your normal pen whatever you will read in a particular paragraph you indicate as to what sort of information can be obtained from that particular paragraph rather than you highlighting some of you end up highlighting the whole question because the whole question is really really important in solving the requirement so we are going to apply it we're going to apply it straightforward so if this question is in front of me and i would have to answer then i will go straight to the requirement first and i'll read the requirement and upon that i will indicate whatever necessary information that um, i require so let's go required a calculate the adjusted present value for the project correcting any errors made in the net present value estimate above and conclude whether the project should be accepted or not show all relevant calculations 
question is clear for 15 marks. We have to analyze this question to know what we are expected of doing. Sometimes a requirement, for instance, requirement A is there for 15 marks, but you are not expected to do only one thing. You are expected to do more than one thing, some of the questions. So when you come here, if I read the question, question is very clear. I should calculate, calculate the adjusted present value of the project. This is one bit of the requirement A. So I have to calculate the adjusted present value for the project. As part of it is telling us correcting any errors made in the net present value estimate above. It means when I go up, I would have to see mistakes in the calculation of an MPV and conclude whether the project should be accepted or not. So that is the bid. So when I pick the MPV, I have to make those corrections in order to calculate the APV. And when I finish calculating the APV, I would have to conclude as to whether the project should be acceptable or not. And the question is telling me to what? Show all relevant calculations. Marking scheme, which is for this five, 15 marks, is going to allocate that 15 marks on the basis of have you calculated the APV? And whilst you were calculating the APV, did you do the corrections? And then did you conclude as to whether the project should be acceptable or not? And then the last one is that you need to show your workings. Full stop. The B requirement for the 10 marks is saying this. Okay? It's saying this. Comment on the corrections made to the original net present value estimate and explain the APV approach taken in part A, including any assumptions made. Here too is the same thing. Comment on the corrections made to the original net present value estimate. That is one bit of the requirement B. And explain the APV approach taken in part A. That is the second bit of the question. And the last one is you would have to explain or include any assumptions you made. So that 10 marks marking scheme will be allocated for the comment on the corrections that you made, the APV approach that you use, and then the assumptions. So this is the pure analysis of the requirement. When you are able to do this, you go to the scenario, you read the scenario, and then you will be able to indicate. Okay, no, the, recorded, the recording version is not the same as the live. Okay, it's not the same as the live. I've recorded um, 10 questions. I think maybe you were talking about the... Um, the promotion one, I've recorded 10 questions that, Mariam, you are entitled to have a look at them. Okay? So that is the case. So now let's go to um, Buranj Co. Let's go to the Buranj Co. You have recently commenced working for Buranj Co. And are reviewing a four-year project which the company is considering for investment. The project is in a business activity which is very different from Buranj Co's current line of business. Okay. The following net present value estimate has been made for the project. All figures are in dollars, millions, year zero up to year four, sales revenue, direct project costs, interest, profit, Tax 20%, investment, sales, cash flows, discount factor, present values. Net present value is negative $1.65 million. And therefore, the recommendation is that the project should not be accepted. In calculating the net present value of the project, the following notes were made. 
since the real cost of capital is used to discount cash flows neither the sales revenue nor for direct project costs have been inflated it is estimated that the inflation rate applicable to sales revenue is eight percent per year and to direct project costs is four percent per year what do i get from this paragraph i see inflation inflation for sales and then variable cost i indicate that next the project will require an initial investment of 38 million of this 16 million relates to plant and machinery which is expected to be sold for 4 million when the project ceases after taking any taxation and inflation impact into account so what do i see in this paragraph i see initial investment and i see residual value i indicate them next tax allowable depreciation is available on the plant and machinery at 50 percent in the first year followed by 25 percent per year thereafter on a reducing balance basis a balancing adjustment is available in the year the plant and machinery is sold Burand Co. pays 20% tax on its annual taxable profit. No tax allowable depreciation is available on the remaining investment asset and they will have a nil value at the end of the project. So what do we see here? We see capital allowance. We also see tax rate of Burand. Okay, so we move on. Burand Co. uses either a nominal cost of capital of 11% or a real cost of capital of 7% to discount all project, given that the rate of inflation has been stabled at 4% for a number of years. So this is real and then nominal discount factors. Okay, V interest is based on Burange Co's normal borrowing rate of 150 basis point over the 10 year government yield rate so this is um if i have to say this will be Burange word spread because we said the interest that you pay your cost of debt is the base rate plus your spread and according to this question Burange code normal borrowing rate is 150 over the 10 year government ward rate so i will say this is Burange spread for its normal debt at the beginning of each year Burange co will need to provide working capital of 20 percent of the anticipated sales revenue for the year any remaining working capital will be released at the end of the project okay so we're going to have this one to be um working capital working capital and depreciation have not been taken into account in the net present value calculation above since depreciation is not a cash flow and all the working capital is returned at the end of the project so this is working capital and depreciation okay it is anticipated that the project will be financed entirely by debt 60 percent of which will be obtained from a subsidized loan scheme run by the government which lends money at a rate of 100 basis point below the 10-year government debt yield rate of 2.5 percent issue costs related to raising the finance are two percent of the gross finance required the remaining 40 percent will be funded from Burand Co's normal borrowing sources it can be assumed that the debt capacity available to Burand Co is equal to the actual amount of debt finance raised from the project so here what do we see i see subsidized loan i see um normal loan and then I see issue costs. You indicate all of that. 
Buran Co. has identified a company, Lentuco, which operates in the same line of business as that of the project it is considering. Lentuco is financed by 40 million shares, trading at 3.2 each, and 34 million debt, trading at 94 per hundred. Lentuco's equity beta is estimated at 1.5. The current yield on government treasury bills is 2% and it is estimated that the market risk premium is 8%. Lintico pays tax at an annual rate of 20%. So I'll say this is the proxy. This is the proxy because they are using Lintico as a way of calculating their BTS or cost of capital. Both Buran Co. and Lintico pay tax in the same year as when profit are end. I have to calculate APV. The understanding of the question here is that somebody calculated the MPV wrongly. So we are going to use these figures, make the necessary adjustment, and then we will use it to calculate APV. Question is very clear. I would have to calculate APV. So my question to myself first is, how is APV calculated? For the sake of we, we revising, let me bring you to the level. When I was teaching the APV, I gave you a very simple flow. If that flow is with you, you can just quickly answer this question. What I'm going to write, I'm revising um, the flow with you. You don't write the flow on your... Um, answer booklet if you have practice you go with this trade so when they ask you to calculate apv apv should be calculated as the base case mpv plus or minus the finance effect cash flows which will be the present value of the finance effect cash flows how do we calculate the base case MPV? We said to calculate the base case MPV, to calculate the base case MPV, I need my relevant net cash flows, and those relevant net cash flows are supposed to be discounted using cost of equity in all equity situation, and then I will also think about the PV of the finance effect. How will I get the cost of equity and gear? It depends on the question. All, all of them depends on Miller and Modigliani. Have I been given cost of equity of the proxy? If the post cost of equity of the proxy company is given, then I will need preposition 2 which says that the cost of equity of the geared is equal to cost of equity of the ungeared plus the cost of equity of the ungeared minus cost of debt multiplied by debt 1 minus T divided by E. Okay, then if the work of the proxy is also given and is geared, we would have to ungear it. And we said the work of the geared is equal to the work of the ungeared multiplied by 1 minus dt divided by e plus what d. And we all know that the work of the ungeared is the same as the cost of equity of the ungeared. So this is how I will get my base case MPV. The next level here is, have I also been given beta? If I have to get the beta in the question, then how will I calculate the cost of equity and gear? I will first have to go and look for the proxy beta. When I pick that proxy beta and the proxy beta is geared, I'm looking for cost of equity and geared. Therefore, I will need what? The ungeared beta. So if that proxy beta is geared, then I would have to ungear it. And then I will put it in the capping to calculate the cost of equity word and geared. When I was teaching, I told you, you don't need to re-gear when you are calculating APV. The reason being that you are separating financing from operations. Therefore, we need the cost of equity that measures only business risk. 
Therefore, we need the asset beta, which is the same as the ungeared beta. And as a result, do not re-gear when you are doing APV. We don't re-gear. Then, if I come to the finance effect, what finance effect cash flow should I go to the question to look for? I am going to pick issue cost, if any. I will also pick the tax savings on capital, I mean, sorry, tax savings on interest. Tax savings on debt interest. And then, finally, I will think about the subsidy. I will think about the subsidy. So, these are the things you need for APV. If this is here, straightforward, you go to the question, you ask the question for this information, and the APV will be answered. But as I told you, when you go to the exam room and you are asked to calculate the APV, you are not going to waste time to write all this. No, you have to um, bring it from your memory. So picture it, and then you ask the questions accordingly. So I'm using this as the template to be solving a question for you so that as I keep telling you, if you have got your framework, the moment you pick the question, you ask the question, I need this, I need that, and the question will be giving you all the necessary information. That clue is what I want us to learn for the revision. Because there's one thing having learned the thing, and another thing applying it in the room. How do we apply this in a given question that we've been asked to calculate the APV? Okay, so now... Let's go back to the question and then we will be able to calculate the APV. Our analysis is saying that to calculate the APV, I need the base case MPV. And to get the base case MPV, I need relevant net cash flows. I come to the question, where are the relevant net cash flows? Somebody had calculated the MPV wrongly. He used what? Sales revenue. But note one is telling us that since the real cost of capital is used to discount cash flows, neither the sales revenue nor the direct project cost have been inflated. It is estimated that the inflation rate applicable to sales revenue is 8% per year and to the direct project cost is 4% per year. What do we see here? That requirement was asking us to make corrections to those cash flows that they've used to calculate the MPV. Get your right net cash flow and then you will calculate your base case MPV. That is the whole understanding of the question. We all learned in chapter number two that we can only use the real discount factor or real analysis instead of the nominal analysis if and only if all the cash flows associated with the project specifically all the relevant cash flows are subject to one percentage rate of inflation if all the cash flows are subject to one inflation rate then we can use what the real approach by giving this question the inflation rate for sales and variable costs are different so if they are different then of course we couldn't have used the real so if the person has used the real we are not in, on the same page with him because he's done something which is wrong therefore if we are correcting it then the sales revenue is supposed to be what inflated so now let's go straight and do our analysis here so if based on this I will say year, year zero, year one, year two, year three, and then year four. Project is for four years. Okay, let me economize my, let me do my board well so that in case something will go to year five. Zero, one, two, three, and four. Leave space in case something will go to year five. You prepare yourself for it. For the purpose of the analysis, they've done everything in millions of dollars. Okay, we're going to start with sales. Sales, according to what we explained, the sales should be subject to inflation. Therefore, I pause here, go down there, and go and do my workings on the sales, and I will come back. 
Okay, so I will say my workings. Workings one will be on sales. Year one, year two, year three, year four. The sales figures were given as um, 23.03. Um, 36.60, 49.07, 27 These figures are uninflated. And we said as long as the inflation rates are different, obviously, we would have to use the nominal approach. And as such, we would have to inflate them. So we have to inflate. So what will be the inflation? According to the question, when I go to that paragraph straight, I know straightforward from this paragraph because I indicated inflation for selling price or sales and variable cost. I come to that paragraph, I pick that 8%. Um, so if it is 8%, then I will say 1.08 raised the power 1, 1.08 raised the power 2, 1.0 raised the power 3, 1.08 raised the power 4. Okay. So I pick my calculator and then I multiply them quickly. So 23.03, 1.08, this is 24.87. I'm keeping them to two decimal places. Why? Because that is what the examiner used to do the first one. So you multiply this by that one too and that is 42.69. The next one is 61.81. And 36.92. These are the sales figures. So I move myself up to go and put it in my template. So my sales figures are 24.87, 42.69, 61 61.81, 36.92. Then the next is going to be based on the question in front of us. If I come here, I'm picking these cash flows, making adjustment as to which one is relevant. And those which are not relevant, obviously, I would have to take them out. So direct project cost, obviously, is also relevant. But that wasn't inflated. So straightforward, I would have to go and do the workings on that. So I come down here. I will say my workings too will be direct project cost year one year two year three year four okay what is the cost according to the question the costs are 13.82 21.96 29.44 having got this these are also subject to inflation variable cost or direct cost what is your inflation rate Note 1 told us inflation of the variable cost or direct cost is 4%. So I'm going to increase them by 4%. This is raise the power 1, raise the power 2, 3, and then raise the power 4. And how much will be the figures? This is 14.37, 23.75, 33.75, 33.12 and then um, um, 19.05. So these are the direct costs, which I believe this one should be something straightforward for us to follow. So we bring ourselves here, which is direct project costs. And I've got 14.37 minus 23.75 minus 33.12 and then 19.05 minus okay now we go back to the question the next cash flow there is interest the next cash flow is interest payment but we all know the absolute amount of interest is irrelevant because its effect is already included in the discount factor so when you are generating the cash flows interest given there the absolute amount of the interest you have to pay is simply irrelevant therefore that 1.2 million is supposed to be 
eliminated. It's supposed to be ignored. So I move on. The next is profit and the tax. So I go straight to my calculation. If the interest is not part of it, then I sum this, getting ready for my cash profit. So this minus that is what is given 10.5 here, 18.94. 28.69 and 17.87 okay then the moment i get my cash profit the next thing is i need my tax and tax savings on capital allowance it's a template you are generating net cash flows so what then will be my tax okay i go to the question um Buranj, what is your tax rate I look at the question we indicated things i come straight this is where i see my tax rate i haven't highlighted i've indicated so the moment i look on the sheet i know where to pick whatever i needed so that paragraph is where i indicated capital allowance and tax savings on what i mean tax rate so question is telling here that buran co pays 20 percent tax on its annual taxable profit so if they pay 20 percent the next question i would have to ask myself is when is that tax supposed to be paid when is that tax supposed to be paid look at what the examiner did he brought the 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 year in which the tax is supposed to be paid on the following page so if you are not able to indicate you'll be reading and you wouldn't know and because you are behind time you'll be forced to make your own assumption that is the reason why i advise you the moment you read you would have to indicate so here is telling us both buran co and lenti co pay tax in the same year as when profit are end so they are paying 20 percent in relevant years when i was teaching i brought your mind on when you pick the tax rate naturally you need to ask the question again when do you want me to pay it because we are dealing with cash cash flows and then we need the receipt and payment when is the money supposed to be paid and when is the money supposed to be what received so this one is 20 percent in relevant years i come here i pick my calculator the 10.5 times 0.2 and that is given 2.10 because it's relevant yes year one will be year one and so on so 18.94 times 0.2 is 3.79 minus 28.69 times 0 0.2 is 5.74 minus 17.87 times 0 0.2 is 3.57 minus here okay then i need my tax savings on capital allowance I need my tax savings on capital allowance. How do I get the tax savings on capital allowance? I will need to go back to the question and get information. So let's go to that paragraph. The paragraph we indicated capital allowance is here. It's saying tax allowable depreciation is available on the plant and machinery at 50% in the first year, followed by 25% per year thereafter on a reducing balance basis okay on a reducing balance basis a balancing adjustment is available in the year the plant and machinery is sold and then the tax rate comes in no tax allowable depreciation is available on the remaining investment asset and they will have a nil value at the end of the project so the capital allowance is 25 percent uh, sorry 50 percent in the first year and 25 percent thereafter on the plant and machinery therefore i will need the cost of the plant and machinery so let's go straight to where we can find the cost of the plant and machinery and then that is what we indicated in no two initial investment and residual value so i go straight to that um, note read refresh my mind pick it and move on the project will require an initial investment of 38 million of this 16 million relates to plant and machinery which is expected to be sold for 4 million when the project ceases 
after taking in any taxation and inflation impact into account. So the plant and machinery cost is 16, having residual value of 4, reducing balance is 50 for the first year, 25% for the subsequent years. So I go here and then I need to do my workings on the capital allowance. So I come down here, my workings 3 is going to be tax savings on capital allowance tax savings on capital allowance the tax savings on capital allowance year one the cost of the i asset is 16 okay and year one the capital allowance is 50 percent red so capital allowance should be eight multiplied by your tax rate of um 20 percent and that will give you the savings. I'm putting this ones here just for the sake of teaching. In the exam room, nobody needs the heading. Move on. So this one will give us 1.6. When I come to year 2, the 16 minus the capital allowance of 8 will bring the reduced balance to 8. And then multiply by 25% reducing. And I'll multiply by the tax rate straight forward. And what will I get? So 8 times 0.25 times 0.2. And that is giving me 0.4. Because subsequently, it will reduce by 25%. It should reduce to 75%. So here, I will say the 0.4 multiplied by the 0.75. Because subsequently, it's reducing by 25%, it should reduce to 75%. So that's 0 0.4 times 0 0.75, and this will give me 0 0.3. Year 4, if you remember, we said it should be the difference. And that difference is that you bought the asset at 16, it has got a residual value of 4, therefore, the qualifying expenditure is 12, and then your tax rate is what? 20%. Therefore, the total balance or total benefit you will get will be 12 times 0.2, which is 2.4. But you have already claimed this. So deduct from that. So minus 1.6, minus 0.4, minus 0.3. And that is given 0.1. And these are the tax savings on the capital allowance. I move myself up. Okay, so tax savings on capital allowance because tax is paid in the relevant years, then obviously the savings will also happen in the relevant years. So the first year we said is 1.60, second is 0 0.4, 0 0.3, and then 0 0.1. Okay, then the moment I finish my tax savings on capital allowance, I have to think about my capital items, which will include initial investment, residual value, and working capital, if any. Okay, so straight, let's go to the question, and we ask, we need initial investment. Where did we indicate initial investment? I come to that paragraph. They said the total investment is 38 million of which 16 million is the plant and machinery that is fine i needed the total so total is 38 million and there is a residual value of uh, 4 million for the plant and machinery the other one they said it will have no residual value if you come down here to um, note 3 so therefore i will say my initial investment in year 0 should be equal to 38 million my residual value value of the plant and machinery should be what the four million so this is how the movement is supposed to be then i will move to the next i ask the question have you got working capital because i have got my template so i'm asking question i need this i need that have you got working capital if you have got it i deal with it if you haven't got it i move on to the next so i ask this question have you got working capital yes when we were indicating we saw working capital here and he's saying that at the beginning of each year buran co will need to provide working capital of 20 percent of the anticipated sales revenue for the year any remaining working capital will be released at the end of the project okay so that is the case 
when the trainee or whoever who prepared the MPV was actually calculating the MPV. His argument is working capital and depreciation, that is note VII, working capital and depreciation have not been taken into account in the net present value calculation above. Since depreciation is not a cash flow item and all working capital is retained at the end of the project, we can't accept that. When we go to the B, we will write it. But working capital cannot be totally forgotten about it because we have to bring the uh, working capital for each year. Because of time value of money, it has got different implications. Therefore, we would have to go and think of solving the working capital. So I will come and write working capital here and leave space. Come down here. And I will say workings for is in relation to working capital year zero one two three and then four okay what is the working capital question is telling us that the working capital here the work at the beginning of each year buran co will need to provide working capital of 20 percent of its anticipated sales revenue for that year okay so i will say my working capital at beginning of a year is 20 percent of the sales for that year so let's come here what are the sales figures for the year we did the sales calculations here and then we've got these figures so let's bring the sales figures they are 24.87 42.69 39.88 36.92 these are the sales figures as a matter of fact in the exam room i will encourage you to write these figures because you see them there i'm teaching and i want you to see what i'm going to do okay so therefore what will be the total working capital what will be the total working capital okay so the working capital according to the question is 20 percent of the sales figure for that particular year okay working capital at the beginning of the year is 20 percent of the sales for that year when i was teaching the number of years i explained to you that when we say year zero it's not a year year zero is now year one is not a year year one is 12 months after this period so beginning of year one is year zero and the end of year one is year one i told you you can use your your age the day you are born you are year zero that is the beginning of your one year life the day you celebrate your one year birthday that is the end of your one year the next day you are beginning your year two so the year one becomes the beginning of year two year two becomes beginning of year three and so on so if 20 percent of the sales for year one is supposed to be put at the beginning of year one as working capital year one beginning of it is year zero so i will find 20% of this, 20% of that will give you 4.97. 20% of that will give you 8.54. 20% of that will give you 12.36. And 20% of that is 7.38. So that is your flow. So if I have to trace them for you, this is how it should be okay and technically you are not putting any working capital in year four because if you put it at the end of year i mean year four which is the beginning of year five you are telling me we need to finance the operations of the project for year four to year five project will end at the end of what year four so i don't need to put any working capital at the end of the year four. the project is actually season these are the total working capitals what do we need we need the relevant cash flows so we need the incremental cash flows so what will be the cash flows initially i put in 4.97 which is a minus figure then the difference between this and that 8.54 minus 4.97 is the additional working capital abroad which is 
five seven minus working capital also increase again so 12.36 minus eight point five four is going to give me three point eight two minus and then working capital decrease from 12.36 to 7.38 when working capital decrease it means you have recovered your money how much have you recovered 12.36 minus 7.38 and that is 4.98 positive and then this 7.38 went into zero you have recovered everything of 7.38 so let's move up to get the um, working capital right so i will say um i've got 4.97 minus 3.57 3.82 all are minus and then this is positive 98 here 7.38 the moment i am done with my working capital i know this is the end of the cash flows so sum them up so when we sum all of them up then we will get the overall net cash flows and the overall net cash flows here are simply 42.97 and this is um 6.43 11.73 so these are the net cash flows when you get the net cash flow, then you have to ask yourself, what technique am I using? Am I using APV? Am I using MPV? If I'm using APV, then I need the cost of equity ward and geared. This is where my focal point is. Be with me here. This is where my focal point is. That is where I'm watching. So I've got my relevant net cash flows. Now I need my cost of equity and geared if i need the cost of equity and geared then i need to ask the question how do you want me to calculate it have you given me a proxy company and that proxy company you gave to me did you give me its cost of equity did you give me its work or did you give me its beta the question will give you the answer so let's go to the question and ask that question the proxy you gave to us did you give cost of equity? Did you give beta? Or did you give what? Work. And we indicated proxy here. They said Buran Co. has identified a company, Lintu Co., which operates in the same line of business as that of the project it is considering. Lintu Co. is financed by 40 million shares trading at 320 each and 34 million debt trading at 94 per hundred. Linty Co's equity beta is estimated at 1.5. Okay, so the proxy they gave it what beta. So if they gave the beta, then I'm going to bring myself to this level. Okay, so if I've given a beta, I need that proxy beta. Ask the question proxy, proxy beta, are you geared? If you are geared, I would have to ungear and put it in the capping. So this is what we're going to do down there as our workings. So I come here, workings five. I come here, workings five. Cost of equity and geared. And that cost of equity and geared, I'm going to say that I need a proxy beta. And that proxy beta, according to the question, is 1.5. This proxy beta, are you geared or are you ungeared? The question said that 1.5 is equity beta. Note it. It said equity beta. Equity beta could be geared or ungeared. So once it's equity beta, it will be geared if I am picking it from a company which is geared. And this company linked to is having debt. So if it is having debt and it is geared, then its equity beta is geared. Okay, so I would have to say you are a geared beta. If you are a geared beta, my principal is telling me I would have to ungear. And according to Miller and Modigliani, the ungeared beta, which is the asset beta, is equal to the equity beta geared 
equity over equity plus debt 1 minus t so because this beta is for len 2 i have to get len 2's equity and len 2's debt and len 2's what tax so what is len 2's equity according to the question len 2 is having what shares of 40 million at the price of 320 so i'm going to have um 40 multiplied by the 320 and how much am i going to get 40 times 3.2 which is 128 what about it debt we go back to the question question is telling us that it has 34 million um debt with a market value of 94 per every hundred 34 94 hundred okay so it debt will be 34 multiply by 94 don't forget to divide by 100 so 34 times 94 divide by 100 which is 31.96 and as such i will be able to say that the asset beta should be equal to the 1.5 multiply by equity is 128 128 plus 31.96 into bracket lean to what is your tax rate according to the question lean to also pay tax of 20 percent sometimes you would have to be okay the question is um loud and clear the question is um june 2014 question number two okay buranj co buranj co june 2014 14 question number two okay right so we move on so 20 percent you need to check sometimes some of the questions will tell you the proxy company's beta i mean tax rate is different from the other company's tax rate so check it here is 20 percent 20 percent so here will be 80 percent so i am going to say that um 0.8 times 31.96 plus 128 um reciprocal of that times 1.5 times 128 and that is giving me asset beta of 1.25 okay so if it is 1.25 once it's apv no need to re-gear so i will say my cost of equity and gear will be the risk free that beta asset uh, market return minus the risk free i go to the question where is the risk free rate Okay, if you come to that same paragraph here, proxy, they gave us the risk free rate and market return. The current yield on government treasury bills is 2%, and it is estimated that the market risk premium is 8%. So 2 and 8. So I'll say this is 2% plus the beta of 1.25 and then the market risk premium meaning they have already deducted the market return minus the risk free so what then is the cost of equity and gear 1.25 times 8 plus 2 and that is 12 percent so if the cost of equity and gear is 12 percent then i move myself up okay i move myself up i'll say discount factor here is 12 percent this is one 12 percent year one is 0 0.893 0 0.797 0 0.712 0 0.636 and then you multiply that so this is 42.97 this is um 5.74 9.35 20.12 and what then will be your base your base case mpv okay so when you sum it up that is giving you 8.62 
So that is the case. That is the case. I've got my APV in terms of the base case MPV. Not finished because this is where my focal point is. The APV is the base case MPV. This is done. Then I need PV of what? Finance effect. So question, where is your issue cost? You, you deal with it. Where is your tax savings on interest? You deal with it. And your subsidy, you deal with it. APV is over. So let's go and ask the question, these three things, and we handle it. Okay. So I will need to look at my workings again. Continuation. So my working six, I will say issue cost. I need a PV of it. I go to the question, where is the issue cost? When I come to this paragraph, this is where I indicated the issue cost. And the question said, issue cost relate, related to raising the finance are 2% of the gross finance required. Of the gross finance required. Okay? There's something you need to pick there. Of the gross finance required. Okay, so what is the finance required? Okay, based on our analysis, we've got to know that in year zero, the total capital we need will be the face capital plus working capital. So total capital I will need is equals to 42.97. When they say gross, if there is issue cost, you have to go and raise the money. And pay off the issue cost. Whatever is left is what you would have to use to finance the project. So to finance the project, I need forty-two ninety-seven. Okay. So let's go straight to the issue cost. I need forty-two point um, nine seven. This is what I need. I need to raise money which is more than 42.97 pay off the issue cost whatever is left it should be the 42.97 so it means if there is issue cost of two percent then plus this amount which will be 98 percent should be equal to the hundred percent of the amount i would have to raise so it means that if I raise this 100% and I take off the issue cost of the 20%, it should bring me to the monies I need for financing the investment. If you go and raise 42.97 and you take off the issue cost, what will happen? You won't get the 42.97 needed for that particular investment. So raise a more amount take off the issue cost, the net amount should be the amount you needed for the investment. That's why the sentence is telling you that the gross amount required. Okay, so I will say the 42.97 should be equals to 98%. Therefore, if I need issue cost of 20%, how much is it going to be? Isn't it 2 over 98 multiplied by 42.97? And how much will be the issue cost? 2 divided by 98 times 42.97 and that is given 0 0.88. So the issue cost is 0 0.88, but this is a cash flow that is happening now because you have to raise the money now. And the point that you are raising the money, that is when you would have to actually pay the issue cost. So the issue cost is happening in year zero. If the present value of any cash flow in year zero is obviously that same cash flow. So the PV of the issue cost is simply going to be 0 0.88. I am done with it. I bring myself up here. Okay. I'm calculating my um, APV. I've got the base case MPV. So I need the PV of what? Finance effect cash flows. I've got the issue cost. PV of issue cost is simply 0 0.88. Nobody should tell you it should be minus because it's issue cost you are paying. I will also need to ask, is there any tax savings on interest? Is there subsidy? When I do the calculations, come and put them there, sum them, and my APV is out. So let's go and sort out tax savings on interest. So I say my working seven, my tax 
saved on interest. My tax saved on interest. I go to the question, how do you want me to calculate the tax savings on interest? I first need to know my interest. Question is saying there, you see where we pick the subsidized and um, normal loan. It's saying in this paragraph that it is anticipated that the project will be financed entirely by debt. 60% of which will be obtained from a subsidized loan scheme run by the government, which lend money at a rate of 100 basis points below the 10-year government debt yield rate of 2.5. Okay, then when you come down there, the remaining 40% will be funded from Burrans Coast normal borrowing sources. Okay, so the amount I am going to raise I will need to finance the project, which is working capital and initial investment of um, is it 42.97. This is the money I will need to finance. And the question is telling me it can be financed from subsidized loan or can be financed from a normal loan. Okay. So these are the two things you need to sort out because each of them you would have to pay different word interest rate. So how much is the subsidized loan of the total? Question said is 60% of the 4297. So how much amount am I going to get? It's going to give me 25.78. The other one will be 40%, the normal. 40% of the 42.97 and that is expected to give you 17.19. So having got these two figures, this is the subsidized loan and this is the normal loan. Interest I have to pay on them are different. Okay, therefore, what will be the interest to be paid here? Okay, so the interest on the normal loan will be 25.7 i'm sorry on the subsidized loan will be 25.78 multiplied by the interest on the subsidized loan let's go to the question and ask for it question is saying that um 60 percent of which will be obtained from subsidized um loan scheme run by the government which lend money at a rate of 100 basis point below the 10-year government debt yield rate of 2.5. 100 basis point means 100 divided by what? 100, which is what? Um, 1%. So 1% below the 2.5%, obviously, should bring me to 1.5%. So I will say the rate here will be 1.5%. So I pick 25.78 times 1.5 divided by 100. That is 0. Point approximately 39. Then what will be the interest here? 17.91 multiplied by what is the interest we pay on our normal loan? Let's go and ask the question. Question is telling us here. Okay, we indicated the spread. It said interest is based on Buran's Coast normal borrowing rate of 150 basis point over the 10 year government yield rate. So 150 basis point over. So it means 1.5% above the government 10 year loan rate. And the government debt yield for 10 years, they said it's what? 2.5. So 1.5% above means 2.5 plus that 1.5. So that will give me about 4%. And what is the 4% there? So I will say 17.19 times 0 0.04. And that will be 0 0.69. So what is your total interest? My total interest will be the 0 0.39 plus 0 0.69 so 0 0.69 plus 0 0.39 and that is 1.08 so what will be the tax saved the tax saved will be the 1.08 multiplied by the tax rate of 20 percent times 0 0.2 will give us 0 0.216 
So having got this 0 0.216, I will save this task for the life of the project. And the project is for how many years? Four years. So what will be the PV? Because tax is paid in relevant years, I will have annuity year one to year four, isn't it? And the issue is that PV should be two zero point two one six multiplied by what annuity factor do we need? This is the point you have to be with me. What annuity factor do we need? APV could not tell us what discount factor we should use to discount the cash flows associated with the finance event. So we APV made the assumption that we can either use the risk-free rate or cost of debt. Whichever you will use in the exam room, just state your assumption. I'm discounting it using what? Cost of debt or the risk-free rate. Whichever you will use is absolutely perfect for the examiner because that is one of the major criticisms of what? APV. So straightforward, I am going to say that I'm assuming the cost of debt of 4%. Somebody could have used the risk-free rate of 2%. Somebody could even have used what? Um, the base rate of long-term government rate of 2.5. APV couldn't tell us, so it's your choice. But what you have to do here is, whichever you will use, please state to the examiner the one that you use. So I will take um, annuity factor of 4% what? 4 years. Okay, so when I go there, annuity factor 4% for years. That is my assumption. I'm using the cost of debt. As I said, you can also use whatever you want. So 4% for years is going to give me 3.630. And as such, the PV will be 0 0.78 million. I'm up, I am done with the interest tax savings on that particular interest. The next one is, you see, this is where my focal point is. If my focal point is here, I know what I'm going to ask next. I've done issue costs. I've done tax savings on interest. I'm going to ask the question, have you got subsidized loan, which is a cheaper loan that is going to save me money? We saw subsidized loan. So let's deal with that subsidized loan and the APV is out. You see the pace the examiner will expect you to be moving. So it's not something that you are going to hesitate. Oh, what is the principle saying? What is the principle saying? You have to be flowing. Okay. So now let's go to the last working, which is workings eight. And workings eight will be PV of, I normally want it to sound this way. PV of net subsidy. Okay, according to the question, you can infer from here. According to the question, the analysis we did with the um, tax savings on interest, we have to borrow money normally. We also have to borrow from a subsidized um, loan from the government. And that subsidized loan, we are paying interest of 1.5%. On the normal loan, we paid interest of what? 4%. So, the government loan is saving us money of the difference between these two. Because if the government didn't give us the loan, we would have paid on the normal, which would have been 4%. So, we are saving 4 minus 1.5, and that is the subsidy. But don't forget, the moment you don't pay interest, you pay less interest, what will happen? Your taxable profit will increase. And when your taxable profit increase, obviously, you would have to pay what? More tax. So you don't save everything. You save net of tax. So I will say the subsidy will be the 4% minus the 1.5. We are saving, is it 2.5%? But technically, this 2.5, we don't save everything because of the tax effect. The tax rate is 20%. Net of it will be 80%. And multiply by what is the loan amount. The loan amount for the subsidized loan is what we are seeing here as the 25.78. So 25.78 and this is my savings. 2.5 times 0.8 times um, 
uh, 25.78 all divided by 100 and that is 0 0.5 um, I would say about 0 0.516 okay then I need the PV I'm saving this year one to year four because we assume this four percent as the discount factor obviously we should be able to do that okay i technically agree with you but acca give you the leeway here okay on the assumption that you are going to finance the issue cost from different source okay so that is what they give you the assumption but technically I perfectly agree with you. That is my normal way of solving it. But the current examiner just give that leeway by uh, calculating the subsidy and the interest on the working capital and the initial investment. So, costas, that is the true, true analysis because the gross amount should include the issue cost of the 0 0.88. It is perfectly right. But I'm doing it the way the current examiner does it. He set about two, three questions on this and that is the way he handled it. But technically, if you use that approach, they can't mark you wrong because the markets conference will definitely pick it up for you. Okay. But for you to be consistent, I will prefer that you go by what he does. Okay. But technically, what you said is right. So 0 0.516 multiplied by the annuity factor of the 3.630. Okay. So 0 0.516 times 3.630. And that will give us 1 point, um, 1 point 8, 1 point, um, 87. So that is the case. So when I get 1.87, then I will say what will be the APV. Now let's post the figures. This is 0 0.78, 1.87. So I go up there because I've got my base case MPV in there. I've got my issue cost. So what is the PV of tax saved on interest? And this is 0 0.78. And what is the PV of the net subsidy? And we got 1.87. And this will be your APV, basically. Okay. So I will say 8.62 minus 0 0.88 um, plus 0 0.78 plus 1.87. And that is 10.3 ward 9. Because the APV is positive, you say you would have to ward accept the project. Because question told us to do so. Okay, point of attention. You're not going to write this to the examiner. You have to write this in a sentence. Because the APV or the project is financially acceptable as the APV is positive. As the APV is positive, don't just go and do it this way. I'm teaching. That's why I said it in a sentence. The project is financially acceptable because the APV is what? Positive. Or since the APV is positive, the project is financially acceptable. So that is the A. That is the A. I've told you watch out for APV this time. Now let's go to the B. And what are we supposed to do to the B? Comment on the con corrections made to the original net present value. Explain the APV approach taken in part A, including any assumptions made. Okay, so now let's go and comment on the corrections that we've made. So I'm going to create three headings. I'm going to create three headings because I see three questions in this requirement. So I will create this heading. I will also create the approach and I will also create the assumptions. Okay. Marking scheme will allocate the marks like that. So if we're able to do them on heading by heading like this, you make life very comfortable for yourself and for the marker too as well. So I will say the B. Let's go to the B straightforward. Okay, so when I go to the B, we're going to say that one, corrections made. What corrections have you made? If you remember, we said that 
interest is not a cash flow item it's irrelevant because its effect is included in what the cost of capital so you tell the examiner one correction you did is that interest payment is not a relevant cash flow as its effect is included in cost of capital. Two, what else did we do? No, Mike, we are not supposed to calculate the MPV again in part A. No. We are not supposed to calculate the MPV again. The calculation was, or the question was, to calculate APV by correcting that MPV. That's exactly what happened. The wedding actually confused some people. The question was, calculate the APV by correcting that MPV mistakes that they did. Because to get the APV, you needed what? The, the net cash flows and those net cash flows are from the net cash flows that were used to calculate what the mpv so the a no requirement for you to calculate the mpv okay that would have been absolutely an abnormal question for that um how many marks you cannot calculate the whole apv and then the, for 15 marks no possible way okay right Okay, the wedding. See, he wanted to say APV for the project by correcting those cash flows. Brilliant. Right, so what correction did we do again? What correction did we do again? If you come up here, we did so many other corrections. Question told us that sales and variable costs were not inflated because he's going to use the real cash flows and as we criticize you can't do that you can only use the real approach if the inflation rate for all the cash flows are the same so we will say that um the real approach could not be used because of different inflation rates for sales and variable costs. So we have to use the nominal approach as we did. What again, if you go to the question, so many things in there. Question also said that um depreciation if you come here he said working capital and depreciation have not been taken into account in the net present value calculation above since depreciation is not a cash flow and all the working capital is returned at the end of the project of course he is right to say that we do not have to include depreciation because depreciation obviously does not involve what movement of what um, cash, so it's irrelevant. However, he forgot to bring in the tax savings on capital allowance. So watch out. Okay, so let's tell the examiner um, excluding. Depreciation was correct as depreciation does not involve movement of cash however tax savings on capital allowance should be included okay and then the four will be working capital his argument is that this is what you have to picture if you don't picture you wouldn't say it his argument here is that okay 
working capital that we put in here all the working capitals we put in will be able to recover if you do this plus that plus that minus this and that is equals zero so his argument is because whatever working capital you put in you recover everything then it is better you don't have to bring them at all so from a layman's point of view this is how the argument will be but from finance man point of view no because of the time value of money on the real cash flows they are the same positive will be equal to negative but their timing is different and as such they will have different word time value of money so we cannot do that okay so we cannot ignore the working capital or in the name of the fact that they are they have different time value of money so working capital cannot be excluded because different years different year working capital will have different present value in other words time value of word money okay so these are the corrections that we have actually made and the next question is what is the apv approach am i supposed to say anything here this is why i took the time to explain how to calculate apv how will you calculate the apv straightforward this is what you need you are going to put these ones in words. You are not going to put them in um, arrows like that. So the APV approach is that the cash flows are supposed to be separated between cash flows from operations and cash flows from financing. And when you get the cash flows from operations, because they are coming from operations, it is consistent with only operating or business risk. So those cash flows are supposed to be discounted using cost of equity award and geared. And that cost of equity and geared, according to this question, we are using Lend2 as a proxy B, uh, company. And as such, we borrowed Lentus proxy beta, we ungeared it in order to get what the business rates on the assumption that both companies or companies in the same industry faces the same word business rates, and then we put it in the capping. And when we finish, we would have to sort out the issue costs, we would have to sort out the tax savings on what the interest, and we have to sort out what the subsidy. So, this is what he is expecting us to put them in the form of words how to uh, calculate what APV. So, I believe that one should be okay, and then. So when you discuss that there, then the last heading will be your assumptions. And what will be the assumptions here? What do I normally tell students? Assumptions, questions, coming every mark attributable to it, you would have to pick it straightforward. Assumptions are not anywhere. Assumptions are in front of you. So first one, look at what you've done. The APV that you calculated, how did you calculate it? You used number of years, you used relevant cash flows, you used cost of equity and gear, you used issue costs, you used um, tax savings, you used what? The subsidy. What assumption did you make across board? The first assumption that we can make here is that the cash flows that we use, sales and then direct costs, and they are inflation rate, all of them are subject to what? Um, being accurate. Okay, so I normally summarize it for students. Talk about the cash flows. So here, I will say sales, direct costs, okay? And they are inflation rates are assumed to be accurate. Are assumed to be accurate. If you think they are not accurate, you might think of bringing in what sensitivity analysis is something every question that you will pick and this assumption every investment appraisal question that you will pick you will see this um answer there 
talk about the cash flows they are accurate you are zooming however you can bring in what risk by way of sensitivity analysis to know how much they will change before the figures will bring or the project will break even so you can think of bringing in sensitivity analysis to estimate how the variables will change for the project to break even okay how they will change for the project to break even that is fine you can also think about um, what is the tax okay tax rate is what is it 20 percent for four years is it likely tax rate might change 20 percent for what four years tax rate might change isn't it and then also think about um residual value the residual value that you use we are standing now and we said in four years time the residual value of the plant and machinery is going to be is it four million or so so how how can you do that so also talk about the residual value and then talk about working capital my eye is not anywhere my eye is on what i did okay so if you have seen i've talked about sales direct cost i've talked about tax i've talked about residual value i'm talking about what working capital this question told us working capital will be 20 percent of the sales for the year how easily can that be true okay 20 percent okay of sales for the year and then all will be what recouped we will recover everything at the end okay simplifying it for you because every question is going to be different but these are the headings you would have to be what talking about these are the headings then also talk about the fact that you use what cost of equity and gear and then that cost of equity and gear you use miller and modigliani using lend to as what a proxy on the assumption that business risks are the same business risk is the same for all the two companies which might not necessarily be so then also come and talk about the fact that the issue cost like what um was the name um costas was saying the issue cost should have been included but we are assuming the issue cost is not going to be included as part of what the amount to be raised okay so issue cost is not included as part of amount to be raised okay and then tax savings on tax savings on interest and subsidy what did we do we assume the cost of the debt as the discount factor apv couldn't tell us so cost of debt of four percent this is for this particular question i just want to give you the framework you pick the relevant variables in the question and you fit them here cost of debt of four percent was assumed as the discount factor for finance effect cash flows okay which is more than enough so i am going to say bye bye to this very question i'm going to say bye bye to this question and then we will move on to international investment appraisals so if we go to our course outline we have to answer june 2015 question number one june 2015 question number one and this is a 50 marker question so let's go straight and have a look at that okay so this is Yulandwi, which is relating to international investment appraisals, which is in relation to international investment appraisals. As usual, where will we start? We would have to go to the requirement to know whatever. I've explained it already that when you read a requirement, it helps you to indicate where to pick what. Because look at this question, how big 
big question is everything that you need you can't come and read this big question reading will take all your time so you will have to indicate using your pen instead of using the highlight pens okay right now let me bring your mind on something um i should have said earlier look at this question that we just did okay look at the minute we used to do that calculation in the a and what was the total calculation marks the total calculation marks was 15 and look at the b comment on the corrections made to the original net present value estimate if you know it you can write that and explain the apv approach if you know apv approach you can write that and the assumptions which are in the question and this one will give you how many marks 10 marks okay so don't stay here for a very long time if your time is going you can skip come to the b once you've known the corrections you've known the um, assumptions and all that you know the apv approach you can come and write that and get your 10 marks so that the break even this is 25 marker question the break even for me is 12.5 so every 25 marker question, my target is a minimum of 25. If I come here and I'm able to get this 10, I'm able to get even 8 out of it. Which if you know what you're doing, you should be able to get this 10. By being prudent, get 7, 8. And then you come here and then you do the working sales variable cost. You do some of them and some two are giving you a hassle. As long as you've been able to do and you get something like, let's say, even 8 out of the 15. 8 plus 8, you have crossed this 12 and a half. But what students do? They stay on the A, waste all the precious time. By the time they come to the B, which is easy, time is gone. They are not in position to write it well. They shorten the sentences and what they have to get one, they tend to get half. Or what they have to get to they tend to get one and you are losing precious marks okay acca typically will push you normally with the a or the b and it will sit you down okay read the requirement program yourself i can do my b without the a because my b doesn't depend on any answer from a i will go ahead and i'll do it okay so that is the strategy and this question which was tested in the june same thing happened that's the reason why I, I decided to bring you back so now let's go to the june 2015 question number um one let me pick mine june 2015 question number one which is a very very big question indeed okay so as usual i am going to read the requirement we analyze it a discuss the possible benefit and drawbacks to immunico of setting up its own assembly plant in ulandwe compared to licensing a company based in Luandwe to undertake the assembly on its behalf five marks okay this question for instance if you know it you just get the five marks only five marks you don't go and write a, a dissertation on it it's only five marks typically one good point will give you what one mark i need benefits we're analyzing i need benefits and drawbacks of the company going to establish a plant if you are establishing a plant here in the country we call it foreign direct investment so instead of the company going to establish the plant in that country, they could also license it, give it to another company in that country to produce our product on our behalf and they pay us royalties or something. Okay, he wants you to know benefit and drawbacks of foreign direct investment relative to what? Licensing. If we're able to come out with, let's say, three or four, three point here, seven point should be enough okay you don't go and repeat yourself or because you know so many advantages and disadvantages you go and write about 15 point the maximum you can get for that requirement is only five so watch out b prepare a report which i evaluate the financial acceptability of the investment in the assembly plan in Yulandwe. 21 marks discuss the assumptions made in producing the estimate 
and the other risks and issues which Imonico should consider before making the final decision. 17 marks provides a reasoned recommendation on whether or not Imonico should invest in the assembly plant in Yilandwe. Three marks. Professional marks is four marks, which I'm going to illustrate how to get it. Okay, now be with me. If you look at this question, it was international investment appraisal. Look at this. 21 marks. That is the appraisal calculating the MPV or APV or whatever. And you know the massive time that will require you to do. And then come to the II assumptions made in the producing the estimate that is one and other risk and what issues that is the two isn't it they should consider before this one you can pick the 17 marks quickly which we are going to see and then provide a reason recommendation on whether the company should invest that depends on i anyway if i've got M mpv of positive or apv of positive then i will say oh they should go ahead or whatever so my focal point is not going to be on the 21 no because the 21 if i want to get everything right i might not be able to finish therefore some of them might be punishing me but i need the mpv in order to come and conclude in order to get the stray marks therefore any line that is giving me a problem i am prepared to sacrifice some of these marks in the 21 any line that is giving me a problem i won't sit on it because the moment you sit on that line you are losing more marks down there so move which i'm going to use this one to illustrate okay Professional marks means you would have to prepare it in the form of a report. Two from date subject, you write, you conclude, that's it. Or sometimes you say two, you write, then you say compile by date, that's it. Okay, so that is the case. So when you get such big questions, there are easy marks, but normally ACCA will put one requirement there. That is going to take massive time. And that is the question most students normally also want to go in for. So please, take your time, analyze the requirement, have a program as to how you will answer it in order to be able to maximize your mark. Nobody is interested in showing or telling you that you are the most brilliant person in the world. You did everything absolutely. That's not what I'm praying for you for. I am praying that you'll be able to do something reasonable to get 50 marks. So the 50 marks is the minimum I'm expecting or I'm praying for. So that when you go to the room and anything otherwise come up and you'll be able to get 100. If you get 100 for me, I'll be very brilliant. I mean, very happy. But if you are not able to get a 50, unfortunately, that will be um, not too brilliant, isn't it? So now let's go. Discuss the possible benefit and drawbacks to eMoney Co. So let's go and read the scenario. Okay. When they ask me to evaluate an investment, it is an issue of am I supposed to use APV or am I supposed to use NPV? If the question gives me issue cost, subsidized loans, if you remember, then APV is better than NPV. If I don't see issue costs, I don't see subsidized loans. And the question does not specifically ask me any method. Like here, they didn't ask me for specific method. Therefore, whilst I'm going there, at the back of my mind, I'm going to look for is there issue costs or not? Is there subsidized loans? If I don't see them, I will evaluate using my MPV. Okay, so that is the clue. So now let's go and read that big scenario Please don't read it like a storybook. Indicate whatever you can find in a given paragraph. So I'll start. Yulandwi, whose currency is the Yulandwi Rand, has faced extremely difficult economic challenges in the past 25 years because of some questionable economic policies and political decisions made by its previous government. Although Yulandwi population is generally poor, its people are nevertheless well educated and ambitious. Just over three years ago, a new government took office 
and since then it has imposed a number of strict monetary and fiscal controls including an annual corporation tax rate of 40 percent something had come up their annual tax rate so i will write my tr tax rate i know what my tr stand for you use your own abbreviation in an attempt to bring Yulandwi out of its difficulties. As a result, the annual rate of inflation has fallen rapidly from a high of 65% to its current level of 33%. These straight monetary and physical controls have made Yulandwi's government popular in the larger cities and towns, but less popular in the rural areas, which seems to have suffered disproportionately from the strict monetary and physical controls. It is expected that Yulandwi's annual inflation rate will continue to fall in the coming few years as follows. Year 1, 2, and 3 onwards. So this is obvious. I can decide not to write because that one, when you look on the sheet, you can pick it. Yulandwi's government has decided to continue the progress made so far by encouraging foreign direct investment into the country recently government representatives held trade shows internationally and offered businesses a number of concessions including one zero corporation tax payable in the first two years of operation an opportunity to carry forward tax losses and written and write them off against future profit made after the first two years so these are the concessions okay the government representatives also promised international companies investing in luandwe prime location in towns and cities with good transport links Imonico, a large listed company based in the usa with the U.S. dollar as its currency, manufactures high-tech diagnostic component from machinery, uh, for machinery, which is which it exports worldwide. After attending one of the trade shows, Imonico is considering setting up an assembly plant in Yulandwe, where parts will be sent and assembled into a specific type of component which is currently being assembled in the USA. Once assembled, the component, comp component will be exported directly to companies based in the European Union. This export will be invoiced in Euro. Assembly plant in Yulandwe, financial and other data projections. It is initially assumed that the project will last for four years. Something has happened. Number of years. The four-year project will require investment of 21 million for land and buildings, 18 million for machinery, and 9 600 million for working capital to be made immediately. Working capital will need to be increased annually at the start of each of the next three years by Landwis inflation rate and it is assumed that this will be released at the end of project life so i see initial investment i see working capital it can be assumed that the assembly plant can be built very quickly and production started almost immediately this is because the basic facilities and infrastructure are already in place as the plant will be built on the premises and grounds of a school. The school is ideally located near the main highway and railway lines. As a result, the school will close and the children currently studying there will be relocated to other schools in the city. The government has kindly agreed to provide free buses to take the children to these schools for a period of six months to give parents time to arrange appropriate transport in the future for their children. The current selling price of each component is 700 euro 
and this price is likely to increase by the average eu rate of inflation from year one onwards so we will say selling price the number of components expected to be sold every year are as follows so i have got my unit the part needed to assemble into the component in Yulandwe will be sent from the USA by Imonico at a cost of $200 per component unit, from which Imonico would currently earn a pre tax contribution of $40 for each component unit. However, Imonico feels that it can negotiate with Yulandwe's government and increase the the transfer price to 280 per component unit okay so i see component cost or somebody will say parts let me put it this way parts cost okay the variable costs related to assembling the component in your land way are currently 15,960 per component so this is my variable cost. The current annual face cost of the assembly plant are 4,600 million. So this is my face cost. All these costs, wherever incurred, are expected to increase by that country's annual inflation every year from year one onwards. Imonico pays corporation tax on profit at an annual rate of 20% in the USA. The tax in both the USA and Yulandwe is payable in the year that the tax liability arises. A bilateral tax treaty exists between Yulandwe and the USA. Tax allowable depreciation is available at 25% per year on the machinery on a straight line basis. So this is um, tax capital allowance. Imonico will expect annual royalties from the assembly plan to be made every year. The, no the normal annual royalty fee is currently $20 million, but Imonico feels that it can negotiate this with the Landry's government and increase the royalty fee by 80%. Once agreed, this fee will not be subject to any inflationary increase in the project four-year period. So I say royalties. If Imoni Code does decide to invest in an assembly plant in Yulandwe, its export from the USA to the EU will fall and it will incur redundancy costs. As a result, Imoni Code's after tax cash flows will reduce by the following amount. Okay, so this is um, redundancy cost, which is obvious anyway. Imonico normally uses its cost of capital of 9% to assess new project. However, the finance director suggests that Imonico should use a project-specific discount rate of 12%. So this is my cost of capital. Other financial information. Other financial information. Current spot rate, euro per dollar. Um, you land we run per euro, YR per dollar, forecast fu uh, futures rate based on expected inflation rate differentials, okay, YR per dollar, YR per euro, expected inflation rate, euro expected inflation rate next two years, euro expected inflation rate year three onwards. USA expected inflation rate year one onwards. Discuss the possible benefit and drawbacks to Imonico of setting up its own assembly plan in Yulandwe compared to licensing a company based in Yulandwe to undertake the assemble, assemble on its behalf. So this five marks, I think it should be something that should be picked straight forward. So what will be the benefit of you going to establish the project in that particular country? Against if you had given somebody or another company in that country the permission to produce that component that you produce in the USA. Okay. First, one of the answers can be got from the question. Because the country 
want to encourage foreign direct investment, they are giving what concessions to foreign companies. So when I establish the plan myself as a foreign direct investment, I should be having access to all these concessions available to foreign companies. If I give the license to a company already in that country to obviously do it, then they are not going to what, get any of those concessions because it is not a foreign-based company. So that is one. Okay. So now let's go and look at um, the answers that we need to give there. The A is not part of the report. Therefore, I write it freely. The B and the, um, the B is where the report is. So I will go straight to the A and then I will start giving my answers. So I will say A. What will be the benefit? Okay. What will be the benefit? The benefit here is one. As we said, um, the foreign direct investment will enable the company... To have access to all the concessions, okay, available to foreign companies. Okay, two, if you establish your own plan, you are going to produce the product yourself. You haven't given it as a license for another company to do it. So whilst you are producing it yourself, you'll be able to control and maintain high quality. If you give it to somebody to do it, it, is, it might be possible that they would do it to the quality that you expect and they will dilute your component. And of course, it will lead to loss of customers. So let me do it point here for you. Um, what's the name of that company? Imonico. Imonico can control and maintain the quality of its product. Because when you give it to another person, the person might not be able to produce it to the quality that you want. And when that dilution comes up, you might lose customers. So I'm doing it point for you. The third one here is going to be of the fact that if you give the license to somebody to produce, you have to tell the person the way you produce it. And as such, if after the four-year license period, you don't continue, the person had already got the technology of how you produce it so you release it but when you are doing it yourself you will be able to preserve the confidentiality of the production of that particular product so let's put it this way um, preserve the confidentiality one minute confidentiality of the production of the product okay you don't pass it on and obviously the big thing here is that when they are able to um, do the foreign direct investment they are diversifying into that country and we all know diversification has got the effect of reducing what risk which might lead to decrease in cost of capital okay the foreign direct investment will lead to diversification into what's the name of you land way hence reduce specifically and specific and on systematic risk and therefore work so these are the advantages is more than enough for five point i mean five marks this is more than enough for the benefit now let's see some of the problems 
what will be some of the problems one obviously if you would have to go and establish there then you need to put up the plant and everything so there's high initial ward set up cost so i will say hi let me do it point here hi initial start up cost okay two when you go to somebody's country you are a foreigner you might be um, having some political risk you might have what political risk you might have what regulatory risk okay if you have licensed and given it to somebody or a company which is already in that country they are in that country they know the country holding everything constant they know the country more than you the foreigner so they will be able to maintain things better than you are because they know the culture and the culture risk will be what reduced okay so the licensing will reduce cultural risk as the local company will be able to know um, better than you you also have to think of you would have to train you would have to train the local people there as to how you would have to produce your product and by training them by training them is going to take a longer time there's a learning curve and as such there will be more cost to you so i'll say high cost of training new personnel they are all there so these are the points that you need to talk about eight is too many for a five marker question but you need to i mean explain write it as i'm explaining you don't just write them in point like that high um high initial startup cost you explain that we need to um put up the premises like this one the premises is going to cost us um is it 21 million or so and plant a machinery if we have to um license it all that wouldn't be our cost the licensee will be responsible for setting up all those ones isn't it so that is the case now let's go to the b the b is what the examiner is expecting us okay to write a report and for there to be a report your calculation should be in the appendix that is the essence of this four marks here your calculation should be in the appendix and what do i recommend to student i recommend to student that you cannot write or come out with appendix before the report the report should come before the appendix four marks don't leave it out therefore if i'm sitting down in the exam room i will open let's say this is my b i will open the whole of this page leave it out that page leave it out come to let's say the third page and i will write appendix okay when i do my calculations and i get my figures i go back and then go and write whatever report which is here okay so this is the first thing you need to do so we are going to the appendix to calculate the mpv why mpv no subsidized loans no issue cost so i need to calculate my mpv how many years is this project supposed to go how many years when i come here did i indicate number of years straightforward i know where i indicated number of years i come to that paragraph how many years are you supposed to go don't assume check it with the question they said four years so i will open i will say year zero one two three and then four I leave space in case something will go to year five. I leave space in case something will go to year five. Okay, this is international investment appraisals. First, I would have to generate the cash flows in the currency of the country in which the project is supposed to be undertaken. And this country is Luandwe. And Luandwe, they are 
currency is YR. So I will say YR. I'm doing everything in millions. Okay. So that is what I have here. So for the purpose of tax, we have to start with our sales. So what is the sales figures? I would have to go and do my calculations and the sales. So I have to leave space here. I leave, let's say, two spaces here. And then I go next and I will say my workings. You do your workings and you post. My workings, one will be on sales. Year one, year two, year three, and then year four. You see how big the question is. You have to be on fire. So I go and read. I know sales is selling price multiplied by unit. Where did I pick selling price? The moment I come here, this is where I pick the selling price. I've seen the selling price to be what? 700 euro. And it is subject to euro inflation from year one onwards. So what will be my selling price? 700 subject to EU inflation. Where is EU inflation? I saw EU inflation here. Next two years, which is year one and year two, is going to be 5%. And then after year three onwards, is going to be what? 4%. So I will go straight to my calculations and I will say selling price. I pick the 700 euro and then I'm adjusting it. Because the 700 is currently, the adjustment of the inflation should start from year one straight. Remember, so 700 times 1.0. What is the um, EU inflation rate in year one? Okay. The EU inflation rate in year one and two is 5%. So 1.05. And that is giving me... 735 i multiply by 1.05 again 772 i multiply by 1.04 from year 3 onwards 803 i multiply by 1.04 again 83 what uh, 5 what are the units okay i go to the question where are the units units were given here straightforward i come there it's 150000 but I'm doing everything in zeros. Yes, it will be recorded. Definitely, Mike, it will be recorded too. Right? So if I'm doing everything in millions, then I will divide the 150 by a million, and that will give me 0 0.1548, 4, 0 0.73, 0 0.36. So I go straight. And I'll say this is 0 0.15, 0 0.48, and 0 0.73, 0 0.36. Now be with me. When I multiply this by that, it should give me sales. But that sales is in terms of what? The euro. Let me show you something. I will say 735 times 0.15. That would have given me 110. 25 this will be in euro but i'm generating the cash flows in the yr therefore i need to convert the euro into the yr i will need exchange rate between the euro and the yr i go to the question where are the exchange rate for the respective years examiner had given me the exchange rate so that is brilliant if he hasn't given it to me, then it's my responsibility to calculate it. But here he said the YR Euro exchange rate 165, 180, 190, and then 200.8. I would have to bring it. Okay. So I will say this is 165. This is um, 180.2, 190.2. 200.8 now be with me i'm managing time here 
Is it good for me to multiply this by that to come and get that before I will multiply by that to come and get that? That will waste my time. So all what I would have done is 735 times 0 0.15 times 165 and that is giving me 18191 I don't need this line I don't need this line for anything I don't need it okay what I want is the sales in YR then I'll say 772 times 0 0.48 times 180.2 that is giving 66775 803 times 0 0.73 times 190.211493. 835 times uh, 0 0.36 times um, 200.8. That is 5. One minute. 835 times 0 0.36 times 200.8. And that is um, 60. 6360. Um, so these are my sales. Okay. Brilliant. So I will move up, go and put my sales figures in there. It's time pressured, so you have to move. So this is 18 191 66775 111493 and then 60 um 360 what next i go to the question again now that i have got my sales i will need my um cost okay what costs are there next is the part cost question says the part needed to assemble into the component in luandwe will be sent from the usa by imonico at a cost of 200 per component unit from which Imonico will currently earn a pre tax contribution of 40 for each component unit. However, Imonico feels that it can negotiate with Yulandwi's government and increase the transfer price to 280 per component unit. What are we doing here? We are generating the cash flows in Yulandwe. So there, they have to buy the component and we initially will sell to them at 200 and we would have made a contribution of 40 but we want to increase the price to what 280 so to them they have to pay 280 dollars per unit isn't it so to them it's a cost but when you come to the head office that is when it will be a revenue or income therefore if we are generating in that country they have to pay the 280 cost full stop when we come to our country that is where the contribution issue will come in so let's quickly go and calculate the component cost so part cost i go down there quickly so two is going to be part cost year one year two year three and year four according to the question the cost per unit is in dollars of 200 and that 200 is subject to inflation obviously and that inflation because it's dollars should be in terms of the u.s inflation i come down here what is the u.s inflation from year one onwards is three percent the 280 is the current the 280 is the current put the 280 there so the 280 being the current means adjustment of the inflation should start from year one so 280 times 1.03 is 288 times 1.03 is 297 press the equal sign 306 press the equal sign 315 and then what will be the unit 0 0.15 0 0.48 0 0.73 0 0.36 because this is dollars when i multiply i will get dollar i didn't i don't need dollar i need the um yr therefore i have to bring the exchange rate what exchange rate the exchange rate between the dollar and the yr i go to the question where is that exchange rate when i come here yr and the dollar these are the exchange rate i pick them 
if they, are, they were not given, I would have to calculate them. So I pick those figures. So first one is 120.1, 133.7, 140.1, 140.2, 140 and then 151.1, 9. When I multiply them, it gives me the cost in what? YR. And you're going to get um, 5188, 19060, 31831, and 17225. Okay, so these are the figures. As I did in the first instant here. Who cares for you multiplying this and that? Get a figure before you come and exchange. We don't need that. So flow. Okay, you haven't got that time. So come and put it here. And this one will give us um, 5188 minus 19060 minus 31831 17225. Okay, then I go to the question, what other costs are there? I also I saw variable costs, so variable costs, because you read and then you build it up. We did the sales, we've done the component costs. Now let's come to the variable costs. Variable costs related to assembling the component in Landway are currently 15960 per component unit. And they are subject to inflation down there. And because this is in the YR, it should be subject to Yulandwe's inflation. And Yulandwe's inflation is given up here. Year 1 is 22, 14.7 and 9.8. So now let's go straight. We go and do the workings for variable cost. Okay. You have to be organized and you have to be fast. So 3, variable cost. Year 1, 2, 3 and then four okay what is the variable cost per unit currently question is saying is um one five um where is it it's one five one five nine six zero so one five nine six zero i need to inflate it by the you land with inflation. So 15960 times one point. That country inflation is 22%. So I'm going to have 19471 times 1 1.147, which is um, 22333 times 1.098, which is 24522. And press the equal sign 26925. This is per unit. So what are the units? 0 0.150, 0 0.480, 0 0.73, 0 0.36. Okay. And what figures will you get in YR? It's 2921, 17901. And then 9693. So those are the figures. Okay. We are solving uh, June 2015 question number one. June 2015 question number one. Okay. So now let's move ourselves up. So we go there. What are the variable costs? We said 2921 minus. 10720-17901 and then 9693 minus. Then what cost again is there? We're continuing. We are here. Next is the current annual fixed cost of the assembly plan where 4,600, where 4,600 million. Okay, fixed cost. When you get there, you need to ask the question, are you specific face costs or are you general general face costs are irrelevant this is international investment appraisals we're going to that country for the first time so any face cost that we will incur there automatically is incremental and as such is specific and it should be relevant so the face cost now is four six and they said it's subject to inflation 
what inflation because this is yr it should be yr inflation and yr inflation is giving us 22 14.7 and 9.8 i wouldn't do any workings for the fixed cost because i've got four six i can increase them by this inflation rate straightforward so when i go here i am going to say my fixed cost it is 4,600. I put it on the calculator. Multiply by the inflation rate in the first year is 22%. So multiply by 1.22. And this is 5,612. And I'll multiply by 1.14.7%. 1.147. And that will give me 64.37 minus. And this will be 1.098. And that is 70.68. And then I press the equal sign 77.60 minus. Okay, 77.60 minus. What cost again have they got to pay? I'm continuing. Okay, continuing. Now they said here there's royalties. Imonico will expect annual royalties from the assembly plan to be made every year. The normal annual royalty fee is currently 20 million, but Imonico feels that it can negotiate this with um, Landwis government and increase the royalty fee by 80%. Once, uh, once agreed, this fee will not be subject to any inflationary increase in the project four year period. Same argument as the component we sold to them. If they have to pay the head office royalties, then it's a cost to them. Royal, I mean, the royalty will be seen as income by the parent, isn't it? So to the subsidiary, they have to pay what? The royalties. So let's go and do the workings on the royalties. I leave space. I go down there. Then I say workings for royalties. Okay, year one, year two, year three, year four. What is the royalty? The question said the royalty is going to be 20 million, but they are negotiating to increase it to by what 80 percent. So if we increase it by 80 percent, then I'll have 1.8 of the 20, isn't it? It's not per unit. Question said 20 million, full stop, subject to increase of um 80 percent. So I will say straightforward here that that 20. I am increasing it by what 1.8 and they said it's not subject to any inflationary uh, movement and this 20 million is dollars so 20 times 1.8 will give me 36 million dollars every year okay but because I am generating the cash flows in terms of the YR I need what exchange rate between the dollar and the YR and that was what were given to us as um 120.1 133.7 142.5 and then 151.9 and what are we going to have so you multiply quickly this time that is giving um 4324 5130 and 5468 okay so when you multiply these are the royalties in yr so let's move up quickly we go and put the royalty figures in there so what will be the royalty as cost to them and then the first one is four three two four four eight one three five one three zero five four six eight okay they are cost to them is there any cost I have to think about again? So we go there. Um, after the royalty, there's no cost apart from tax. Redundancy cost will is happening in our country. It's not happening in that country. So that is fine. So if I have got this, I have to sum them and then get myself ready for tax. When I sum these figures, this is given 146257455. Six uh four nine five four nine five six three and then two zero two one four. Okay, so these are what is called the cash profit. You don't write to the examiner. 
when I get to cash profit, my nest would have been tax and tax savings on capital allowance. And what did I say here? When it is international investment appraisals, as I said, I don't recommend you doing tax and tax savings. When the examiner hide laws, when the examiner hide taxable laws, you will end up giving money for the company making laws. So I told you, get out. If it is international investment appraisals, get out and go and sort the tax out. If it is domestic, as we did with the first question, I did tax and tax savings on capital allowance. I illustrated all these when we were doing the um, lecture. I also told you some people do um, less capital allowance. They calculate the tax and when they finish, they add back the capital allowance. I prefer that one too, but the only problem with it is if you forget to add back the capital allowance, then it means you have treated the capital allowance as a cash flow, which of course capital allowance is not. So I normally encourage students, go out and do your tax as a figure and come back. So workings five, I'm going to say tax. Workings five, I am going to say tax. So year, year one, two, three, and four, I have got my cash profit and the cash profit are the one four six the figures we got there two five seven four five um four nine five six three and then two zero two one four what next i need to less my capital allowance i need to less my capital allowance now let's go to the question to go and read to check the capital allowance. If we go there, where did we indicate capital allowance? Straightforward. I know where to go because I have indicated things. When I come to that paragraph, I see Imonico pays corporation tax on profit and annual rate of 20% in the USA. The tax in both the U.S. and Yulandwe is payable in the year that the tax liability arises. It means they are in relevant years. Bilateral tax treaty exists between Yulandwe and the U.S.A. Double taxation agreement exists. Tax allowable depreciation is available at 25% per year on the machinery on straight line basis. Okay, so um, the capital allowance is 25% on straight line. On what? On machinery. So I have to go and look for the cost of the machinery. Where did I indicate initial investment? I come straight. This is where I indicated initial investment. And the initial investment, I've seen um, land and building, and I've seen machinery of 18,000. Question told me 25% reducing balance only on the machinery. So I am picking the 18%. Um, 18 thousand so that 18 million i'm going to multiply by 25 percent it's a straight line so every year it should stay as it is so 18 thousand times 0.25 will give me what four thousand five every year as capital um, capital allowance okay so what then will be my taxable profit what then will be the taxable profit the taxable profit, this one is obviously a loss, and that loss is giving me um, 4354 four minus, and this is giving 21245. This is 45063, and this is 15714. Um, okay, so these are the taxable profit or loss. Now, this is one of the reasons why I want you to come out, okay? So when you make a loss, the best they can do for you is for the loss to be what? Carried forward. This taxable profit is made in that country. Therefore, what will be my tax? I need the tax rate in that country. In that exam, a lot of students mess it up here because when they read the tax here, they saw they pay tax of 20%, so they were play, applying the 20% there. That is not the case. The 20% is the U.S. tax rate. In that country, they said the tax rate is what? 40%. Look at how dispersed the information was. It needs coordination. 
Okay, so I am going to pay 40%. So if I'm paying 40%, then this should be carried forward. How far can I carry forward? I have to ask the question. Okay, question gave me some concessions that zero corporation tax payable in the first two years of operation. So first two years, I am not paying any ta tax and an opportunity to carry forward tax losses and write them off against future profit made after the first two years okay so when i make a loss i can carry forward after the first two years isn't it against profit after the first two years so when i come here they've given me specific instruction here first year i don't pay tax second year i don't pay tax then if i have made a loss within the first two years i can carry it forward against profit after the first two years so this loss i made in year one i can carry it forward against year three and year four onwards so this loss i'm going to charge against this so i will say the four five zero six three minus four three five um four that is giving me 40709 so that is giving us the 45063 minus the loss of 4354 so this is the net figure in year 4 sorry year 3 and that will be subject to what 40% so I apply 40% of the 40709 and that will give me 16284 and year four i'll apply the whole 40 percent on that figure one five seven one four times point four which is six two um eight six then once i've got the tax when is tax paid question says tax is paid in the relevant years so i'm going to put them back into my calculations in here so when i come here i will say tax i'm bringing tax as a figure year one zero year two zero year three is what i have to pay the one six two eight four and this is sixty two eighty six that we calculated okay so if this is the case tax and tax savings on capital allowance all of them are embodied in these figures my next level is i need my investment capital items what will be the initial investment what is the cost of the machine and that of the um the land and buildings okay this is where we indicated initial investment we have to pay 21 million and 18 million isn't it so i will say um 21 plus that will give me 39 straight so i will just go straight and say year zero 39,000. 39,000 in year zero so 39,000 minus i ask is there any residual value when we were reading we didn't see any residual value i didn't indicate any residual value so i am free to move on so whilst there is no residual value my next question is is there working capital when i was reading i saw working capital there so i indicated working capital i come to that paragraph straight pick the working capital refresh my mind how do you want me to do it Question said working capital is 9,600 immediately, but working capital is subject. Look here, the working capital will need to be increased annually at the start of each of the next three years by land waste inflation rate. And it is assumed that this will be released at the end of the project life. So I have to go and do workings on working capital. So I go down there. I do my workings on working capital and i will come back so what workings is this this is working six um working capital year zero one two three and four what is the question saying my total working capital now according to the question is nine thousand six hundred and this nine thousand six hundred is subject to um inflation and inflation in year one in land way is 22 percent so nine six times 1.22 and that will give me is it 11 7 1 2 times 1.147 
the inflation rate in Luandwe is what we're using 13434 then times 1.098 and that is 14750 don't forget that you do not have to put anything in year four what will be the cash flows cash flows will be the increment or changes so i put in 9600 it's a cash out flow it increased to 11712 what is the difference difference is 2112 then it also increased from 11712 to 13434 what is the difference that difference is 1722 it has also increased again to 14 so what is the difference between the 14750 and the 13434 and that is 1316 and then it's gone to zero so i have to recover that so that is the movement of my working capital it's the pace you need to be on fire okay so i move up here and i will say this is 9600 minus and then it's going to give me um 2112 minus 1722 1316 all minus and this is 14750 as long as I've got my working capital, I know that um, my cash flows are set. So I sum them up to get what is called the remittable cash flow. Now I've got the net cash flows in that country. And this is what we normally refer to as what? Remittable. We are supposed to remit it to the parent. So when I sum, this is going to give me 48600 minus um one nine six six minus twenty four zero two three thirty one nine six three twenty eight six seven eight okay so these are the cash flows all of them in yr millions so once i've got the net cash flows there what should i do i have to what um convert it and bring it into my parent company in us so the sign is supposed to be changing by bringing exchange rate here i need the exchange rate between the dollar and the yr and when you will go to the question the exchange rate between the yr and the dollar the spot which is in terms of year zero is giving us yr per euro yr per dollar is 101.4 and then the other years are this so let's pick them quickly so I'm going to get 101.4, 120.1, And this will change the sign. Now I have to bring it in dollars in terms of millions. Okay. And then we will have to divide. So 48... 48,600 divided by 101.4 is giving me 479 minus. This is what we normally refer to as the remitted cash flow. You don't need to um, actually do this. You don't need to do that. Leave them out. Okay, so we divide this by that. And this is giving minus 16 approximate. This is 180. 224 and 189 so if i'm able to get these cash flows i have brought them into my country the moment i bring into my country a question should come up is there any additional tax i would have to pay that depends on is there a double taxation agreement between the two countries question says yes okay let's go and read that question said here that there's Bilateral tax treaty exists between the two countries. If there exists, then we would have to make sure that we pay the highest rate. In that country, the rate we paid was 40%. In our country, the rate is 20%. So we've already paid the highest. So once we've paid the highest, there is no need for us to think of any additional tax. Check it. Okay. So I will say there is no tax. If there is no tax, then is there any other cash flows associated with the investment that i will get in my own country answer is absolutely yes because don't forget 
they paid us royalty they also bought some component from us for which we are going to make what a contribution so as a result of this project we have received what contribution we have also received royalties they are cash flows that we are earning in our country because of this project so i would have to bring royalties okay okay let me leave space here let for the sake of teaching this is where the additional tax would have been this is where the additional tax would have been but because the, um, there is none i'm just bringing it there for the sake of um, um knowledge then bring any additional cash flows like we receive royalties okay how much royalties did we receive we did the calculation and royalties i go there royalties every year i received what 36 dollars i don't need to come and pick this and convert it again to that because i need now figures in dollars so i will receive 36 dollars every year and when i receive that income that income royalty there's no double taxation affecting it because in that country i didn't pay any word tax on that royalty as a matter of fact they saw it as an expense and rather it reduces their taxable profit so it saves that tax so when i bring the money into my country in u.s the tax man in u.s will say oh, you haven't paid any tax on that um, royalty therefore you would have to pay tax now so that 36 i have to pay tax in my country u.s what tax rate do i pay Question says I pay 20%. So if I'll pay 20%, I will get what? 80%. In the exam room, I am not going to show 36. Then I would multiply by 20 and come and deduct from it. I will just do the net. Okay. So I will say my net royalty, net, my net royalty, which is after tax, will be the 36 multiplied by the 80% okay and i go straight 36 times 0 0.8 will give me simply um 29 for every year 29 approximate 29 approximate okay i've already factored the tax if you have done 36 and you've applied 20 percent 36 times 0 0.2 would have given you let's say 7.27 if you take it it will bring you to the 29 why will i do that even if the examiner had allocated marks for this and that as long as i put this i'll get the two marks because i have already factored what the tax okay so find ways of trying to um, balance your time because it's time pressured okay next i will also have to think about the contribution so i need to go and do workings on the contribution and what will be the workings on the contribution i leave space i go down there we're doing workings on the contribution working seven contribution okay for year one two three and then what four if we read the contribution this is what where most students actually couldn't apply the question told us here that we will normally have sold it to them at 200 and when we sell to them at 200 we would make a contribution of what 40 dollars so if we are now increasing the selling price by 80 which is from 200 to 280 how much contribution will you make that is what some students couldn't do it two ways that you can use to calculate if i sold it at 200 i would have made a contribution of 40 sales minus variable cost will give you what your contribution so variable cost would have been what 160 is the price we increase we didn't increase what the variable cost so if i increase it to 280 minus 160 obviously it should give me 120. an alternative way is that if i sell it at 200 i would have made a contribution of 40. so if i increase the price by 80 of course my contribution should increase by the 80 which is 120 per unit isn't it so i will go straight and go and do my calculation there so my contribution per unit 
will be the one um, one twenty, and this one twenty should be subject to what inflation, and because it's dollars, it should be subject to U.S. inflation rate. And what is the U.S. inflation rate? When you come down here, U.S. inflation rate is three percent. So I'm going to increase it by three percent. I'm going to increase it by um, three percent. So one twenty times 1.03 is 124 times 1.03, 127-131-135. And I have to multiply by the unit, which is 0 0.15, 0 0.48, 0 0.73, 0 0.36. And then when I multiply, okay, for the sake of teaching, when I multiply, it will give me the total contributions that I will make, which is about 19 here, 61, 96, and then what? 49. But when I get this extra contribution, the taxman will tell you, oh, it was expense there. You, it, it actually saved you tax. You haven't paid any tax on this. So the double taxation will not affect it. So you have to pay tax in my country. And the tax rate is what? Is it 20%? So will I multiply this by 80% and go away? And I will get my net contribution. So this is the net contribution in terms of the dollars. So that will give you about 15, um, 49, 77, and then 39. Okay, and 39. So I go up quickly. I go up quickly. So my contribution here is going to be um, net contribution. I factored a tax. The net contribution we said is 15. Um, 49, 77, and then what? 39. So when I finish that, then I'm going to sum everything up. Okay. So what is the overall net cash flows before the redundancy cost? We calculate the MPV of the redundancy cost, and we come and take the um, that figure from the MPV here. So this is 479 minus. Um, total here is um, is it 28 positive 258 330 and 257 and that will be your net cash flows once it's MPV I need a discount factor what discount factor I need the project specific work I go to the question where is the project specific work when I come here I think we indicated something as cost of capital. We indicated it somewhere. Okay, one minute. It should be down here. You see that this one, I didn't indicate. Yes, this is where the cost of capital is. So cost of capital, I go straight there. If you don't indicate and you don't say it, it's going to happen like what I was moving here and there. And of course, time two is going. Immonico normally uses a cost of capital of 9% to assess new project. However, the finance director suggests that Immonico should use a project-specific discount rate of what? 12% is given to me. I pick it. If it wasn't given, examiner should give me basis for me to calculate the project-specific work myself. Proxy beta and gear, re-gear, cap him, and you work it. You get your 12%. You come and put the 12% here. And then this is one, 0 0.893, 0 0.797, 0 0.712636. And what will be the PV here? 479 minus, this is 25, 2062358. And one six three. So the MPV for that project is approximately what one fifty. Okay. So that project will give us MPV of one fifty. But in order to go and do this project in that country, there will be the need for us to make people redundancy here. And that redundancy cost is a cost against this project because that cost could be avoided if we decided not to undertake this project, isn't it? Because if we are not doing this project, those employees will still be there. So let's calculate the MPV of the redundancy cost. MPV of the redundancy and other costs. 
it's an opportunity cost so we need to come and less from this okay and the examiner gave us yes yeah according to the question the redundancy cost this is where it was and the loss contribution is twenty thousand five five six um five seven three six eight five nine zero eight nine okay i need to ask myself these monies are you before tax or are you after tax they said after tax cash flows so once they after tax i don't have to deduct it it's done already so i'm picking them this is twenty thousand, and we're doing everything in millions okay so if you divide twenty thousand by one million one two three one two three that will give me zero point zero two so this one will give me zero point five six and all that money is very very um insignificant year one year two year three year four i should think so right so the figures there are the figures there one minute figures here are um so the cash flow is 0 0.02 0, 0 0.0 can i do it six that like five five so six and then zero point um zero six again and zero point zero six again and what will be the discount factor it's still the 12 percent so if it is 12 percent i will say one zero point eight nine three zero point seven nine seven no 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 one minute i've got one year ahead so this is year one so it's zero point eight nine three zero point seven um you can see it zero point seven I also needed a figure so anyway one minute 0 0.797 0 0.712 0 0.636 okay so these are the figures that we will get let's multiply it's going to be something minute 0 0.02 times 83 that oh dear this is 0 0.02 again approximate 0 0.06 times 0 0.797 this is 0 0.05 Point zero six times point seven one two zero point zero four point zero six times point six three six zero point zero four. So what then is the PV of the cost? The PV of that cost is equals to point zero two plus point zero five plus point zero four plus point zero four, which is zero point one five. Therefore, what then will be the overall mpv so originally mpv of the project we got 150 and then mpv of the redundancy costs we got 0 0.15 so what is the overall mpv of the project which is that from 150 and that is 149 point word eight five approximate so that is your calculations that is your calculations we haven't even done the other one okay let's go straight forward this is what i was telling you i'm teaching that's why i had to do up to the end in the exam room if time is going i'm not doing up to the end because um so many things were demanding i'm not 100 percent sure of this 21 you can't make it okay so do your maximum best with it flow get a horrible mpv because you need to come and give a recommendation here so now let's go and write a report okay let's go and write a report i go back this is where i'm going to write my report so this is a report to whom is the report supposed to go to according to this we have to prepare a report they didn't tell us whom if it's board of directors put it there then you have to come out with what um maybe um from if you want to go by that from who who are you okay and then what is your date what date and then subject the subject here is the Yulandwe project, isn't it? Yulandwe's project. Then you have to introduce this report. Let me do it point for you. Um, the report is about. Then 
you copy the requirement indirectly because the report is about these three things. The report is to evaluate the financial acceptability of the project and also to discuss the assumptions made in the evaluation and other risks and other issues the company should take into account in taking the final decision together with a recommendation as to the action the company should take. So you are copying this indirectly. So you're going to say the report is about one. The I evaluation, the I, I, the assumptions, you're not bringing the I, I and that. I'm just bringing your mind on. You are just copying the question there. Assumptions, um, other issues, and risk, and then recommendation. Okay. Then when you start, you come and write evaluation and you tell the examiner how you evaluated the project. We evaluated the project using MPV, using MPV by discounting the future cash flows to present values and deducting the initial word investment then you say the mpv is positive whatever figure that we got let's say 149 then you see you tell the examiner you have to see appendix one that's it then you are coming to talk about assumptions okay so even if i haven't finished calculating the mpv i will make this room for it and then assumptions and all those things will come down assumptions as we saw earlier talk about the cash flows talk about your sales your variable cost your components parts your face cost your royalties all those things are there together with their inflation rates all of them are assumed to be accurate okay and then chipping the fact that if you want to incorporate what sensitivity analysis just as we did earlier sensitivity analysis in order to incorporate risk how far they should actually fall in order for the project to break even talk about number of years number of years they said is four years is it possible what will happen if we finish our four years or is it possible that we can continue that will give us what is called option to expand can we expand on it after four years or sometimes the project might not even last for four years and we can abandon it and that is what is called option to abandon option to abandon is it compulsory that we have to start the project now not necessarily we can even delay and do it later so we can have the option to delay we can have the option to delay they are all part of it talk about residual value the question didn't give us any residual value so we are assuming residual value is zero talk about your tax okay talk about your tax specific to this question specific to this question the first two years in that country we are not paying any tax if you can have a look at that specific to this question in the first two years we didn't pay any tax one minute oh it's down there rather specific to this question we didn't pay any tax okay let me show you yes we didn't pay any tax because we were having concession so this second year that we made profit will the u.s man tell taxman say so don't pay tax on 
the country that we're doing, the government wanted to attract us. That's why they were giving us concession. Well, the U.S. government also give you that concession. We made assumption that because you're not paying tax there, here too, you won't pay tax. It does not necessarily follow that. That's what I'm saying. I'm giving to you in headings because every question is going to be slightly what, um, different. So also look at the tax. Okay. Also look at the tax. Okay. Here, um, no tax in two years it's also applicable in the usa okay and think about the working capital what are they saying working capital is going to increase by what inflation rate is subject to argument okay um talk about exchange rate the exchange rate, they use the purchasing power parity theory. That's why they said it is reflecting the inflation differentials. Purchasing power parity might not necessarily work. So the exchange rate we use might not be necessarily the same as the exchange rate that might happen in reality. And that will change the figures and the MPV might also what, um, change, isn't it? And the MPV might also um, change. Also talk about the fact that the royalties and then the transfer price. This one is specific to this question. Transfer price, uh, we said we are going to negotiate to increase. So we say negotiation negotiation is successful. If the negotiation is not successful, we can increase them. Okay? If the negotiation is not successful, we cannot increase them. And then come and talk about other risk and then what? Issues. What other risk? You're going to somebody's country. There is a political risk. You know all this. There is what? Regulatory risk. Even ethical, there is ethical. There is ethical risk here. Okay, there is ethical risk you need to actually um, be concerned about. There is ethical risk. Specific to this question, what is this saying? The project will be done in a school. And that school, they have to relocate the, the people to another place. And when they relocate them, the government is going to give the parent only six months, bars free. Subsequently, they have to sort it out. As a company, what is your ethical stand about this? Watch out. Okay. Think about what? Cultural risk. Okay. Even think about block remittance. Block, block remittances. Think about them. Because the money, all of them might not be transmitted back to you, um, your U.S. The government there can block it for the purpose of war, exchange war, control. So these are other risk issues you can actually war, talk about. Then when you finish, you come and give war a recommendation. And what will be the recommendation? Recommendation will be that because the MPV is positive, the project is financially what acceptable. However, to take the final decision, the company should also consider some of these risk factors that we have actually what considered here. Then that's it. So this is how it should follow. If you are able to write something and you come out with a structure, you get the full marks. Okay, it is a very, very, very detailed question. And as such, you have to be prepared to be moving. Okay, so um, our time is up. So we have to stop here. And then I'll see you at um, 6 o'clock for the second session. So I wish you all the best for the time being and see you at 6. Thank you very much.